Okay, green box is up, live counter is up. We're going to assume that means we are live or very shortly will be. And that, of course, means welcome back to the Storytime Network. It is time for the Paradox Hour podcast. And because, of course, it is June, it is Pride Month, and therefore we have a very special Pride Month lineup. Today, we are discussing LGBTQIA plus rep in video games. The good and the very bad. Look, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot. Mm. On both counts. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you think we should get started? That's the question, isn't it? So, do we want to do a general, like, I don't want to go into it in too much detail, considering we are going to, you know, be talking about it uh, next week, but should we start with, basically, like, generalities on good and bad representation? I, yeah. think that, I think that's fair. Again, I don't want to go too much into it, considering that's the topic of next week's. And maybe we should have done it the other way around, but hey, you know, that's... Hindsight. I'd say it's twenty twenty. I uh, mean, it's not too late to change that around. It's it not is. like, is it? It would be a whole thing. I'd have to change the background and the title. I'd have to tweet out. Ah, again. okay. If it's the in-stream stuff, then yeah, I can understand why. It, it'd wouldn't. be a bitch. Yeah, it'd be a bitch and a half to do. Yeah, um, well, the obvious ones, the obvious don'ts are fairly obvious, like, uh, hyper-stereotyping and, uh, barrier gays don't make are the you, big one. Don't make your only, uh, queer character the villain. That's a, that's mm -hmm. a big one. Or the one who dies first. Mm-hmm. Which plays into barrier gays, of course, but, you know, still, still, uh, denotes ass, uh, saying, um... Oh, there's also the whole uh, uh, turning uh, a queer character straight because reasons. Uh, yeah, that, one. That, that one never like makes sense to me. Or like, or in general, uh, it's the whole queer baiting, queer coding thing where having a character very obviously interested in someone. Uh, like, very obviously on that spectrum, and then just having them not be. Hi, Persona mm -hmm. Fall. Hi, Supernatural. That clusterfuck right there. We can I... talk about that one in detail next week. That's gonna be funny. Uh, Look, it is, I just any... Any uh, Disney property... That's like made in house. Mm. That's a bit iffier, but yeah. I mean, it's most of them, right? Like, from what I understand, most of the ones that actually have representation tend to be the ones that, if not, like, they're not out of house, but they're like talent from elsewhere that, like, just chose to do, like, pitched it to Disney as opposed mm. to people who are established at Disney. Mm. Mean like I'm talking like it's the it's the movies Earth. versus the TV shows, right? Mm. Mm. Disney TV shows have rap. Disney movies just don't. Even the TV shows have The 12th iteration of Disney's uh, first gay character. Yeah. But yeah, even the... Also, even the TV yes, shows even the Disney were, shows, TV cycle. shows that have rep tend to just get cancelled. Mm. Uh, anyways, we are focusing on video games this week, because... Why not? But yeah, we, uh, we mentioned stereotypes, but very spe specifically harmful stereotypes. Uh, predatory gays... Uh, uh, the whole uh, predatory any identities really. There's also the uh, very uh, quote unquote popular one of the uh, 
cross-dressing equals a, a trap for straight men. Probably. Yeah, that like, one's uh, just, like... That one just speaks to me of a deep-seated insecurity uh -huh. in these people. And I'm just like, okay, this is coming from somewhere, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure you think that, but just because you think that doesn't mean that's the case, right? Like, yeah, that definitely strikes me as, oh, this is projection. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about video games themselves and uh, some examples of what rep in video games is and what it constitutes good versus bad rep. In the inside video games. I mean, we, we have been to an extent, you know, I'm, I'm looking over uh, the stuff that I've uh, collected that, you know, in the, in the bad sense, uh, quite a bit of it is, uh, is Atlas based. Oh, Atlas. You. Again, Atlas sold out. Cause like, uh, you know what? I can actually bring it like, uh, full circle, uh, because I can, in fact, uh, give examples of places where Atlas did good, and it was usually a long time ago. Oh? Uh, I'll, I'll get into it later. Do you want me... You know what? Uh, Mill, say the bad things first, so I can, like, emphasize how, how much they've sold out. Well, I mean, you've got, uh... I mean, you've got, you know, uh, we've been mentioning it while uh, we've been playing it, uh, Persona 4, that whole thing. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I want to go into it more detail later on, but I will, you know, go into it uh, just briefly now of uh, Kanji's whole deal, Naoto's no deal, and Yosuke being a homophobe. Yep. Okay, I knew about Naoto and Kanji's deal, or Naoto and Yosuke's deal. I this is my first time hearing about uh, Kanji's deal. Kanji's deal. Is Kanji a... is very heavily implied to be gay or bisexual. Yeah, Kanji Kanji's whole deal is that he's bi, very clearly, and like <laughs> the the narrative. He does not just, know what to do with that. The narrative just like refuses to address that really. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it... I mean, you've got the, you know, whole thing of uh, his other self being... I would argue... Very, yeah. I would argue Very stereotypically camp and probably uh, predatory gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his shadow is very um, flamboyant. I mean, that's like awful, but it could be worse in that at least they're like explicitly saying that that's a bad thing to like. Well, but the be, shadow explicitly the, the, the inner the, image of themselves. Yeah, so like it's like at least they're being like, okay, don't be predatory. Hmm. Um, it's a, it's a small comfort, but it's like you take what you can get to maintain your sanity. At, sometimes, yeah. yeah. And and the point is, is that Kanji even outright says it ain't a matter of guys or chicks. I'm just scared shitless of being rejected. And it's like, okay. And then there's his whole his whole reaction to Naoto, who you know is uh... probably NB if not trans. Mm -hmm. At the very least, gender non-conforming. Certainly gender non-conforming, which confuses the shit out of uh, Kanji. Because he's, he's very, I feel like, very clearly... I feel like Naoto confused a lot of people in their youths. Maybe. Mm -hmm. but, it's like I IRL. But he very clearly is attracted to uh, Naoto, and... Uh, I don't... I don't know whether to say he doesn't like it, but or is very uh, anxious about it, considering you know, for a large chunk of well, up until the reveal, you know, the characters all assume Naoto is male. 
Mm-hmm. Which is its own conversation about harmful stereotypes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's 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 its own conversation about, you know, the the power of um well, gender stereotypes, really. You know, people going, oh, well, you're wearing male clothing, so you must be male. You're wearing female clothing. You must be female. I mean, there's a... There's well, a you know, well, no, that's, a, that's, another, that's another can of worms, because that's only if you pass one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a different set of stereotypes if you don't pass. Hmm. Yeah, Naoto passes as a very effeminate-looking boy, but... Which, you know, it's anime, like... Not that's surprising, yeah. really not anything <laughs> particularly interesting about that in, in the grand scheme of things, because, like, there's literally okay. an entire subset of characters. Classic Shonen. But, uh... Once once Kanji joins the party, there's literally no real addressing of his uh, potential uh, attractions. Um, Isn't there also like some subtext with uh, Kanji and like the protagonist as well? I mean, of course. If I recall correctly. I mean, of course there is, because, you know, two male characters uh, getting close to each other, but, you know, Atlas is was, is never going to do anything about that. And then you've got the whole thing, you know, whenever uh, Kanji's, you know, potential bisexuality does come up uh, in the narrative, it's generally so Yosuke can shit on it and make fun of it. Yeah, so are y'all aware of the cut content featuring Yosuke yeah. that was restored in the PC version? Yes. So to give some context, you s- no, 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 no. When you say restored, you mean it was modded in. I don't want to give Atlas credit for you know. Right, right. The the modders it restored not, it. It was not. It was removed by in. Atlas. It was removed and by Atlas modders... and has continued to be kept out by Atlas and was brought back by modders when it hit PC. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I. I, I just wanted to be the clear terminology about is that. important. Yeah. There. I just want to be very clear about that. That it was not Atlas who brought it back. Because that would clearly be too good a move by Atlas. Yes, it absolutely mm-hmm. would. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead and elaborate on it, Fuzzy. Basically, uh, there's this entire thing in his. There was an entire thing in his social link before Atlas. Decided they were cowards, where it was like, uh, he explicitly admitted that he was overcompensating because he was in the closet. Which would have made, made for a much more interesting storyline than... It would have made him a, a much better uh, character, made, yes. Yes. This is known. Uh, so, yeah. Just, like... Let that sink in. Oh, Atlas. So, um, looking at a uh, an article that appears to be from uh, one of the contributors to uh, Anifem, which I've only just realized. So, uh, that's, that's good. Um, so, already existing in Yosuke's social link, um, which, of course, we will never be getting to because that would require spending time with him voluntarily, and we're never doing that again. Uh, <laughs> the uh, end of his social link is heavily homoerotic, because um, you can say that you're not interested in any of the girls, which makes Yosuke feel happy. Um and he's got uh, a special event from that dialogue choice, which is usually something that only happens uh, during romances. Uh, and that particular event is in of itself a hug. And... So yeah, Atlas really fucked that up. So uh, okay. And yes, there is there is audio files still present that. Um, have both Japanese and English lines 
So it got to the point, like, it was already complete. I mean, of course it's feature complete if it can be restored, but, like, it mm. even got to the point where it was dubbed. And usually, I'm in my experience, isn't dubbing, like, something that happens very late in the Just series? Just like, later in the later in the development, yeah. 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 Usually happens uh, with a few months left before release, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, and so, you know... Among those cut lines is Yosuke saying, I like you, in Japanese, skida. Uh, and apparently Pretty classic based, confession line. Yeah, based on uh, Yuri Lowenthal's performance, uh, the line was delivered in a romantic context. Absolutely. No, no, no. That There's no question about that. Yosuke wanted to get freaky with the protagonist. I haven't heard the line, so I, you know, I was hedging based on, you know, what I'm, what I'm currently reading. But you know, if, if you back that up, then great. So yeah, that's this whole big thing of, you know, and then we get to, you know, Persona Five with, uh, you know, the uh, those two. Are they actually gay or are they just in drag? I am really can't remember. Uh, 100%. I think One Piece Okama. Yeah. I've heard that, that sort of scenario. No, ironically Roy. enough, I would say... Yes, Fuzzy? Sorry. Well, I was going to say, ironically, One Piece is probably, like, a surprisingly decent <laughs> representation, all things considered. One Piece, yeah, has surprisingly good trans rap. Which is odd, but... Mm. Yeah. Good for Oda. Uh, but, um... Speaking of Atlas, we do need to talk about Catherine as well. Catherine was going to be the next one I brought up. Here. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, so... For, just while we're still on Persona... I might as well bring this up. Atlas was not always like this. No, they weren't. Try to elaborate for the audience? Yeah. So, in Persona 2, the first one, because Persona 2 was one of those, there were two Persona 2s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, in the first Persona 2, and remember, Persona 1 and 2 for newer Persona fans, were not dating sims with dungeon crawling mixed in. Shocking, I know. They were Weird. instead... Yeah, they were instead straight-up dungeon crawlers with mm. plot. And I'm just like, it's shocking that such a thing could even exist. But, uh... Yeah, and as a result, there were there was romance. Uh, in fact, there was a in Persona Two a binary choice. You could choose to romance one character or the other. The protagonist was male, and so were both of the romance targets. Oh, both of them. Yes, literally, it only had gay romance. Pretty rad. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there was, like, that uh, carried on into, like, the second one where there was a female protagonist, but she was also into girls. I don't know if it was exclusively in that one, but, like, it happened. It was a thing. So, look looking at uh, Wikipedia, you've got uh, Tatsuya Suo, who is the protagonist, who is uh, by uh, Jun uh, Krosu, gay, uh, Anna Yoshizaka, lesbian, and uh, Sumaru Jini, intersex. That's from Innocent Sin, and then Eternal oh. Punishment, uh, Jun Kashihara, gay, Anna and Noriko, lesbian, and then same characters from the uh, first one as well. So yeah, it turns out Atlas knows how to do it. They just choose not to because they sold out and they're bigger now. Like, they were basically a small indie studio. 
not indie, but like they were a much smaller studio. They had much, the stakes were much lower. The games were very niche. And as a result, they were definitely much, much less uh, scared of putting representation in. Mm-hmm. An interesting thing also is that it's not that they don't have the rep anymore, it's just that they're a lot worse with the rep now. Like, the rep that they do have. I mean, I don't even think you can, like, call it rep, really, can you? Mm. Like, I mean, it's de deteriorated to the point where it's like... It's it... not great. So, yeah, uh, now you can talk about Catherine, which is... Oh, boy. Catherine is a whole ass thing. So there's basically, there's two... There's one definitely trans character, and there's one uh, character uh, who only appears in the remake, I believe. Uh, yeah, there's a, the, the updated re-release. Uh, which makes it even Catherine worse, with frankly. a Q. Yeah, which makes it even worse, really. Um, yeah, they went out of their way to, like, add that to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and that re-release came out... When did it come out? Well, the first one, I think, <laughs> came out, like, 2015 or 2016. 2019. The first one, oh, came, wow. it initially came out in 2011. The re-release came out right, in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the original Catherine on PS3 is was on PS3 and it's pretty old. Mm -hmm. Jesus, it is old. So yeah, as I said, there's one. Was it 2019 or was it 2020? 2019. It was 2020. 2019. Definitely 2019 because I remember uh, being in a being in a group of friends uh, where they and I don't ask me why they played it. But they played it. I wasn't happy with it, and I pretty much ignored it. But it happened, and because it was in person, that means it was 2019. Oh, yeah, ah, it was it. in the before times. It was in the before times, yes. So yeah, Catherine with a Q is a gay crossdresser, who is uh, basically a legitimate romance option. Well, the, like... which is. A choice. Uh, like, I don't know if okay. they did it well or not, but... So, spoiler alert for, like, I'm... From what I understand, I haven't played the game myself, but I do like reading spoilers. Hmm. So, if you care about the storyline of Catherine with a Q and, like, Catherine remake in general, you have been warned. Spoiler warning's up. If people don't listen to it, that's on them. Yeah, I think later it was established that that individual is also, like, an actual alien? Yeah. Like, it's this whole right. weird thing where it's just like... I mean, one of the Capper other Capperns is also a succubus, so. yes. So, it's not out of left field, but, like, mm -hmm. it's just, like, the optics of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Having the only uh, gay character be uh, a non-human entity is kind of iffy. So, again, I don't know for sure. Didn't get that far in the game when I was watching people play it. And even then, as I said, I wasn't paying much attention because I knew knew what Catherine was about. I'm not even really sure. Yeah, it's a sure. puzzle game. Yeah, I'm not even really That's... sure uh, sort of um, what Rin... Because because that's what her actual name is, rather than Catherine with a Q. Just Rin, which is basically a short Catherine. Well, yeah, but like the that's what the character is called. But I I I feel like there's something about. But it's, yes, it's, anyway, it's go on. short for Catherine with a Q. But Rin is the more is the name that's the one that actually like makes sense. Name. Well, yeah, because there's fucking three. There's two other Catherines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you I'm like fucking if you, tell them apart. I'm kind of just like 
I am over <laughs> Catherine. I am not going to touch that game. No, of course not. I'm, you know, I'm not going to. I'm kind of just like, if you were going to add a third person, you could have chosen a, a like a name that has more than two variants. Yeah. Right? Like, I, maybe it was in their original design doc, maybe not, but, like, I have to imagine they knew at some point that they were gonna have, like, someone, like, maybe they intended at some point that there was gonna be a third person, but, like, I'm just like, but you, you, there's there were alternatives to this. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, go on, Mel. Um, so I'm not I'm honestly not 100% sure whether Rin even sort of thinks about gender, like, in in a conventional sense, in a binary sense. Like, it seems... They're heavily implied to be, like, well, if, there, if the rep was good, then you could say that they were implied to be M NB, but the character read more NB than anything else. The point is, is that, um, like, generally, you know, for, I think, most of the story, uh, the main character and the narrative, uh, consider, uh, Rin female. They dress in, you know, female clothes, they pass, that sort of thing. And then when, uh, main character sees Rin naked, uh... He reacts Which is shock. also, it happens in a very, very bad way, if I recall correctly. Like, in one of those things that is a trope, but really should not be, because it's kind of awful. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, uh, yeah reacts, fun time stuff. reacts in shock, runs away, and starts calling Ren a man. Yeah. Lovely. Absolutely it's lovely. Not a good look. And then you've I... got you've of course got the uh the the trans character uh Erica yeah, fun character Erica, who, who deserves a lot better apparently honestly. in the original fucking uh like game manual was listed by her dead name yeah just like holy That's fucking great. shit what's you know what's interesting about Erica is they accidentally made the character, like, decent rep. And, it, and there was, like, only one character who act in story who actually gave her crap mm -hmm. about it, and that was kind of a character that was established to be not likable anyway. Mm -hmm. But So they accidentally kind of did decently by her, but at the same time... She does not get a lot of great uh, story stuff. And it, it, no, she did have a love interest who did, in fact, like there, there one of her her storyline was that there was a dude uh, who had a crush on her, and like the friend, like the main char like the main character's friends were attempting to discourage said dude on the basis of her being trans. But I think they still got together anyway. They did. They did still that get together, nice. but in one ending, he apparently asked for his V card back after finding out that Erica is trans. Oh no! That's not great. There's the false of the fact that you know main character and his friends constantly make like snide comments about Erica in a transphobic sense. There's also the yeah. fact that in in uh, the remake. And, you know, I was gonna say, didn't they, like, do horrible, horrible things to that character in the remake? In the remake, there is an ending where if you pick the succubus, the succubus will go back in time to when the main character is in high school and become human and fall in love, and it's implied that, you know, this is, this is a good ending, except for the fact that Erica hasn't transitioned. Like, at all? Uh... At all. Oh, I don't know how that happens. Like, I don't know how the succubus going back in time the leads game, to that as a basically consequence. The game, it feels like I'm the like game it. is implying that uh, Erica remaining pre-transition is best for her best for her future. That's fucked. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. 
That's just 400 different kinds of horrible. Indeed. Well, let's move from one studio that has a terrible track record to one studio that has a pretty damn good track record with a few bumpy spots. Bioware. Buzzy, you said you wanted to talk about Mass Effect. Like, if you already... My thing is, if you already have gay options, then just make romancing, like... Uh, untied to gender. So you're saying the Dragon Age 2 approach where you can romance everyone regardless of your gender is uh, the optimal approach? I, I think that should have been how they... Uh... That should be how all games are, frankly. Yes. <laughs> that is, in fact, what I'm trying to say. It is a good approach. Dragon Age 2 does have a good approach on that. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm just like, yeah, what's so hard to do that? Like, okay, here's another thing. I Do you know what I see as an argument sometimes that I feel like is not... A, I would like actually like your uh, takes on this. Mm. They're like, oh, but the character isn't uh, bi or whatever. I'm just like, y'all realize the devs decide what the character's yeah. orientation is, right? Mm-hmm. It's not uh, using. This is one of the few cases where I don't think using the Watsonian excuse flies. Yeah. There are places where I think the Watsonian explanation does give you some leeway uh, relative to the Doylean explanation. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Doyle's explanation is kind of funky. But, like, if you want to have a, characters of varying sexualities, that's fine, as long as you have, a, like, a pretty good sampling of of at least the predominant ones. Like, And then just, like, don't have... make those characters the romanceable ones. Just, like, for romance options, I feel like the optimal path, like, the most inclusive path is to just make everyone buy. Yes. Like Dragon Age Two and uh, Dragon Age, and for lesser extent Dragon Age Inquisition did fairly well uh, with this. Inquisition yeah, wasn't as good with it as Two was. If I recall correctly, wasn't it didn't was Dragon Age t so Dragon Age Two was the one where there were no characters locked in to a yes. certain uh, orientation. There was there were no there were the only one that we know of that was was Sebastian and he was DLC anyways nobody liked him yeah he was he was literally the most hated uh, DLC character in all the, of the hated, games uh, party member yeah most hated party member in all of the games frankly and we've had some real stinkers <laughs> yeah yeah Sebastian just sucks I, I'm sorry to any. To all 12 of Sebastian's fans, but he sucks. I'm sorry. He really does. It's not even the fact that I, he's, I, you I know, don't... just, like, arch-religious hate mage type, but, you know. Yeah, no, uh, but of the six party members besides Sebastian, four of them are romanceable and all of them are bi. So, yeah, so Anders, Fenris, Isabella, and Meryl are uh, all bi. Yeah, if I recall correctly, there's, like, it's much worse in Inquisition, right? Like, there's, like, several explicitly straight... No, there's, like, several characters that are explicitly straight. Hmm. If I recall correctly. Cassandra is straight. Uh, Colin is straight. Who are explicitly gay as well. Yes, okay, yeah. Uh, which I believe... So, Era Sarah and Dorian is are explicitly same-sex Yes. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Solus, for, which in hindsight makes perfect sense because he's a dick, is uh, not well, just... By elf women. Yeah. Yeah, so he's racist is what I'm trying to get at. So, uh... When did I... Where did I, which one did I find that on? I found that on one of the TV tropes pages that I've got open. Uh, ah, here it is. It was this one, wasn't it? Um, so it was basically the reason they uh, they chose not to do that 
is because they didn't want to... Uh, because, spoilers for Inquisition, considering Solus is sort of uh, a big picture villain, uh, they didn't want to make him, you know, buy and face the... Uh, face the backlash that, that would cause. See, what's interesting least... is that, okay, that explains Solus. That doesn't explain any of the other characters in the series. Yeah, um, well, the th I think they just wanted to try a spread of, a fairly even spread of gay, bi, and... I mean, that's uh, the thing. I, right? I, I understand <laughs> the desire to be able to, you know, romance every character possible, but at the same time, like... No, I'm like, I kind of I, like the spread of, you know, identities I, that Inquisition So here's the thing. Do. You can do that for the non-romanceable characters, but I think, like, I'm always someone who advocates for maximum player choice and agency. Mm. Mm. And, like, just, again, like, the spread makes sense from a Watsonian perspective, but I think from a Doylean perspective, it's not that hard to, like, have both. Yeah. But at the same time, I also like what they did. Certainly for uh, Dorian. Um, yeah, yeah, they, they explicitly made it part of Dorian's story, which is uh, quite well executed, all things considered. Um, I also like Krem. Krem is another uh, character who's really good. Krem is good, good rep, yeah. 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 I just like... And they've got good old pansexual Iron Bowl. Yeah. I don't think he's limited to pansexual. I think Iron Bull is omnisexual. <laughs> Iron Bull is listed as pansexual. I believe Look, he was uh, explicitly you, said to be. Uh, I know, I know, but developer. like, but it's it's funnier if he's omnisexual. <laughs> There's also a Dagna who is like a character you can date if you don't have any romance if you're a female character. Oh no, that's not. Uh, no, Dagna no. is someone. Who Sarah dates. Yeah. I'm thinking of um, Harding. Harding is the one who you can date if uh, okay. and she's bi. It's it's not an official romance, but you can flirt with her a bunch. Yeah, you can flirt with her constantly, but it never yeah. actually develops into it's anything. Able... Which is <laughs> funny because I'm pretty sure she was like one of the most popular Yeah. Well the point the mm -hmm. point is is that they've never given us a good dwarf dwarf romanceable character. Hmm. I mean, they also do have, um, I mean, even the first game, there's bi, uh, bi romance options. Yeah. In Origins, you can date Zevran or Leliana, regardless of your gender. Mm -hmm. I thought, wasn't Zevran, uh, only gay? No, Zevran no, is, is bi. Oh, huh. Yeah, you got two straight options and two, uh, bi options. So regardless of whether you play male or female, you can romance. Uh, you have three romanceable characters, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And I would argue is like if you're not going to have a, an option one way or another, you can you do that. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I think like Dr Origins Snake Position, while not the optimal approach that two takes. Are still pretty good about it because yeah. they do at least have at least they have the options. options. They have the fucking options. They at least go through with you know having characters with different different identities. For fuck's sake, that it's not a high bar, but it's a bar yeah, that video it's games not a high bar, rarely it's not clear. That hard. <laughs> it's a it's a bar yeah. video games rarely clear, and I'm gonna give props to to Bioware for clearing it. Okay. Yeah. It is better in but Dragon I do Age, think but it's... also does have uh, have it as well. Though uh, I do think uh, Dragon Age does it better than Mass Effect yeah, for it obvious does. reasons. It does. Uh, so in Mass Effect, there are... Uh, three is probably the best uh, of the original trilogy in terms of overall rep. Because you have... Uh, in the first game, the only ro character you can romance who is who isn't uh, straight is Liara, who also comes from a race of monogender aliens. They're, like, they're basically the sci-fi sex demons. No, only a specific subset of them are sci-fi sex demons. 
Well, they're the sci-fi horny alien race. Yes. Uh, but in the Which... second game, there are two romance pools. Sorry, the one of them is very inadvised. Uh, I will say nothing more. But there is also... Kelly I'm pretty Chambers. sure I know exactly what what the context yeah. of that one is. It's like Kelly kind Chambers of is up. It is kind of fricked up, like, the sort of story dynamics of the Asari in general, if you think about it. That's a discussion for another stream. But yeah, um... Mass Effect 3 um, is a lot better it, with regards to overall rep, because there is a lesbian romance option, a gay romance option, and uh, a few bisexual romance options in the form of Kaden, Liara, Samara, and a couple of uh, side characters. Unless, of course, you choose to kill Caden. Yes. But yeah, Caden is a bi-romance option. Uh, they actually specifically uh, made Caden... Uh, so apparently they were going to make Caden and uh, Ashley bisexual in the first game, but they decided against it, for whatever reason. Uh, but they decided to make Caden uh, bi in the third game, so that uh, Mill... Uh, uh, gay player characters could romance a party member and uh Kate That's a were you just gonna, half? Were you just gonna use me as the uh, as the like I said male. Step... I said male player characters. I thought you said mill. I also <laughs> thought you said mill, so I feel like <laughs> I thought you were using me as a standard bear for, for people who That's wanted to you do guys for hearing that. <laughs> I thought you were using me as a standard bearer for people who wanted gay romances. <laughs> no. No I was not. You guys heard that wrong. I said male. I'm going to have to listen a, to that back. That was, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake on my part. I meant to say gay players who wanted a male romance option who was in the party. Look, words are hard. We understand. It let, just, me, let, me just, funny. let me just note down Anyways, the time code for this, because I want to listen to that back. <laughs> uh, uh, and Mass Effect 2 was also a weird one because several of the party members were planned to be either gay or bi love interests, but that got removed because of some dumb fucking controversy over Mass Effect 1 having a having the Liara romance for female Shepard. Which, again, yeah. is really fucking dumb. It's, like, not great. Yeah. So, um, I think also, there were at least like a, four party members who were planned me. to be same sex romance. What gets me is the fact that uh, what people made a big deal out of was, like, the sex scene explicitly, and mm -hmm. that was incredibly tame, even for the time. Like... That's a mention taking part place only once and barely in the game. Right? I'm, I'm just, like... Of all the things, like, if you're gonna make a big deal out of something, like... At least make sure it's hardcore. Yeah, it's just a really fucking dumb controversy. Like, there's no getting around it. The controversy yeah. was stupid. I'm not saying it wasn't. It was. But I'm just like... All the controversies of this type are stupid. Just yeah. inherently. Oh, correct. Absolutely correct. Have <laughs> controversies of this type recently? Or have they died down a little bit? Uh, they haven't. None to my knowledge, recently. That's good, at least. No ones that have actually gotten any real attention. I'm sure they're, you know, they're absolutely well, no, still no, I there. mean an actual, like, widespread thing as opposed to just the usual bigots being bigots. Not as far as I'm aware. That said, obviously, you know, we don't hang around in those circles. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. thankfully. Yeah. Uh, we, we tend to hang around in the wrong, circles though. that celebrate this shit. Though, funnily enough, we do hang around in circles that are largely sausage fests, and statistically speaking, we're very lucky that no one in our circle is in that demographic. I.e. Mm -hmm. horrible. Because, like, proportionally speaking... Especially in our age demographic, there's got, like, you'd expect there to be at least one guy you learn or re, re, learn later on is a horrible, horrible person. We've luckily not really run into that. 
At least oh, I don't your, think. Your audio is going all over the fucking place. Look, okay, I, I'm having some computer trouble, so I'm on my phone. Ah. I mean, yeah, um, the, the point is... Back on... Is, um, well, it's back just, on Mass Effect real quick before ah. we move on. Uh, Andromeda also has a lot of... Um, a lot of queer romance options in the form of, I believe, four uh, bi options and two gay options. From out of like eight or so total uh, significant romances, which is pretty damn good, proportionally speaking. I thought, I swear to God, I thought you were going to bring up the twin cest for a second. No, what? No, no, what the <laughs> hell? No, twin cest. No, you you play it as one of two twin characters, and the other one is still a character in the game, but isn't relevant for most of the game. No, but like, uh, well, yes, but at the same time, to just give you an idea of the eternal ingenuity of the human species, Twin Cest was modded in. A fucking course it was. It's like Why one of the first it? mods made. It's very robust as well, like, it's got an entire, like, it basically turns the Twin Cest into, into its own fully fleshed out romance. The modding community giveth, the modern community taketh away. I will never, I will never not be impressed by the lengths to which people will go to, to uh, execute their horny fetishes. Like the power of horniness is possibly one of the strongest things that has ever existed in the human species. Yeah, it drives innovation and technological development. I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. <laughs> studies on this and everything. Something about, like, wasn't, uh, like, pornography one of the keys to developing the internet as fast as it got developed? Correct. And it makes sense, like, probably a whole number percentage of the internet is porn. And considering how massive the internet is, that is a lot of porn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But we are getting sidetracked and lost in the weeds here, so let's move on to another video game. Or, hmm, which one do you want to talk about next? I'll leave this guy this in your guys' court. You know what? I can, like, I can, like open up my Steam library. Oh, you do you want to talk about Hades? Oh, oh, uh, we... Hades? Oh, yes, Hades. Yeah, Hades is good. Because you play a male character who can romance either a male or female love interest, or both. So you're a poly bisexual. Which is I mean, rad. it's like well, it, also it, 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 not it's at... So, it's okay. Like, it's, it's good? It's... Go ahead, Jack. I mean, poly bisexual is ancient Greece in a nutshell, but... Yes, I was gonna say, it is, this is not at all surprising given the context. <laughs> that's just, like, another way of saying, oh, yeah, that's a Greek deity, all right. Like, 90% of Greek mythology can be summed up as, unfortunately, Zeus was horny. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, consent was never involved. Which is Consent was never why, factor, yeah. yes, which is why we don't like the Greek gods just in general. Some like, of them are like, better than others, but Zeus is definitely there's like a grand total of one Greek deity I can think of off the top of my head, like one mainstream Greek deity who was not awful. Estia. Estia. Yeah. Literally. The, the argument for uh, Hades, but Hestia is the only one who is like the, completely the unobjectionable. Only thing that, the only thing that mars Hades is that whether or not Persephone consented is hotly debated. Yeah, it depends on the version of the myth because mythology is honestly unreliable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if. Hades counts, and like, for example, the other, the closest you get to a character who is not 
problematic inherently is Artemis. And even Artemis did have that one time where she punished one of her hunters for being raped. Which is just not okay. Was that Ovid? I think that was Ovid. Because Ovid did a lot of pretty gross shit with the mythology, if I'm being honest. Look, most of the authors did some gross stuff with the mythology. And yeah, I, it's probably... Did... It's, it's very likely not exclusive to Ovid. I th the thing with Ovid is that he, what a lot of what he did with the myths was... Uh, he used the gods to represent the Roman state, and he was very much not fond of the Roman states. There's, like, a lot not to like, to be fair. Oh, no, it's understandable, but, like, I I'd say take any mythological representations derived from Ovid specifically with a massive okay. grain of salt. So, here is an interesting question. Uh, and this is something that... Uh, is fascinating because it gives you a good idea that uh, there's really no place... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tying this back to Hades, by the way, because there is something relevant to Hades here. There's, like, no orientation that has not existed in history. Like, none, like a lot of people, like the bigots, are like, this is n all new stuff. And, no, this is new stuff. <laughs> No, the none of this is new. The Gilgamesh was basically bisexual. He was bisexual and probably homoromantic. Like, he'd bang anyone, but an, an argument can be made that Enkidu was the only person he ever actually loved. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, maybe you could classify that as Demi. But, uh, no. Gilgamesh so, was okay. bi. Very yeah. clearly bi. Um, like, at least by. Yeah. Also, I'm, like, his, uh, conception was a threesome, and it's heavily implied that his two dads were more interested in each other than the lady they were banging at the time. So, you know, it's got that element of it. Speaking of Gilgamesh, huh? I'm pretty sure his fate uh, counterpart is also bisexual. Uh, his fate counterpart is just gross, so we don't talk about him. Um, anyway, uh, we also don't talk about fate in general, because that is, if you want to talk about bad rep, uh, FGO, oh, oh boy. It's all over the place with its rep, if I'm being honest. I okay. think I am more qualified to talk on it than you are, but... Yes, I, I don't play FGO, but I do a lot of wiki diving. Oh, see, um, I think I'm a little more qualified because I've played the game. And I mean, like, this... Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but anyway, Hades. Uh, so, Artemis. Very early example of someone who is Arrow Ace. We can all agree mm -hmm. on that, right? Mm. Yeah. I am not a fan of one decision they made in... Uh, Hades, in which there is uh, subtext that she is not in fact Arrow Ace, but is uh, lesbian and has a girlfriend. There is See, that I've subtext. Seen interpretations of her either way. It, yeah, it could no, but like it, the the thing is, there's like a lot less Arrow Ace rep. So I feel like they could have just like it would have been better if they just like gone for the Arrow Ace rep than just like but queer coding her. Interpretation of mythology and mythology is notoriously hard to pin down. Not no, but again, it's like it, 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 but, it but, be interpreted either way. No, but the re again, I'm saying it's the whole Watsonian versus Doylean thing. Is like the devs are the ones who made that decision. Yeah, in regards to that specific just... interpretation of the character, and just like there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, you can rather... also easily argue that Athena is also Aero Ace. I think it is uh, Arrow uh, Ace, but like I'm pretty sure she is explicitly Arrow Ace, yes, but like uh, that's not touched upon one way or the other in uh, the game, I believe. Though there were like uh, there, you know, there's demigods running all over the place. I don't know if there were any canonical quote unquote demigods that were sired by or. Uh, Athena, were there? 
Not in the actual myths, no. Yeah, in the mythos, I don't think there were. So, yeah, I think you probably make... That's, basically, that's, the best argument for... Yeah, that's a Rick Reardon thing that he did. Which uh, is just, I'm not a fan of. Uh, I mean, he's still honestly. had her be, like, actively celibate, so... Might have just had her be, yeah, like, so a basically, sexual. Yes, yes, so... Ace, not Arrow. Yep. Uh, is what they... I, I, I don't know. It's it's just one of those... I have problems with Reordan, which we're, we are not going to talk about on the stream, but we're probably going to talk about it at some point, because we're going to do a Reordan stream at some point, I'm sure. Probably when the I mean, uh, probably TV show comes off out. Probably when Jackson when the show comes out. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. That's happening. That's a thing. Yep. I forgot about that. I'm excited. I'm very probably excited. the only time we're going to get a decent adaptation of that series in general. Because, like... I hope so. I... Look... I do the movie wish they could. I I do wish they could get Nathan Fillion back, though. What are, what are the chances nice. of that? I feel like Nathan Fillion would be down for that. I don't know. He does. He's oh, a bit you know, uh, old at this point. Yeah, but for, like uh, great Hermes. gods, right? Like, if he doesn't play Hermes, really he can play someone track. else. We are getting really side. Okay, track. yes, but uh, yes, on the subject of Hades, how do y'all feel about the whole? Uh, Swap in interpretation with Artemis from uh, being arrow ace coded to queer coded in that game. I mean, it's not something I take strong issue with because I do find that the myths themselves lend uh, lend interpretation to either. <laughs> yeah, the myths uh, themselves could go either way. So I I don't think it's invalid to take either interpretation as the basis for characterizing characterizing her. Like, I get your issue, but at the same time, she could easily be written either way. And it would make sense based off of her mythological characterization. So it's not something I'm, like, strongly opposed to. Like, her being coded as either lesbian or asexual. Or both, but... There, there's like the myths support either interpretation. No, the oh, lesbian interpretation has some power dynamic issues. Yes, that is true, but we don't see her actually having a, any romantic interactions with her hunters in the myths. Fair enough. Also, but yeah. Uh, like, I would have preferred yes. that they kept her asexual just because there is so little fucking rap. Yes, exactly. That was games. that's in my entire uh, position on the issue. Like when, we, like, when we started talking about it, I did. When when we started talking about it, I started you know searching for it, and it appears certainly uh, you know in the list of fictional asexual characters for the video game entry, there is literally four. Oh, which ones? Mm. Uh, Ibuki Miyoda from Danganronpa 2, good de Goodbye Despair. Uh, okay. I don't know how important that character is. Probably died because Danganronpa. Yeah, everyone dies in Danganronpa. That's, like, not a knock on the create, like, rep in that series. It's an equal opportunity murder fest. Uh, True. let's see if he's in the... If they are. Uh... Who are the other three? Uh, Dowd from Dishonored. I've heard uh, Dishonored. I've heard it's fun. There's like, I, is it? I that must be like real between the lines because there's like no indication of any of those characters having any sort of romantic so, inclinations except for note, Corvo banging the queen. The note uh, says Dowd, the leader of a group of assassins known as the Whalers, is described as uninterested in sex. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, third... I have heard that the protagonist of uh, Dishonored 2 could be uh, uh, bi. Okay, no, no, no. There's an interesting uh, interesting thing. The protagonist... like, oh, Well, there's two protagonists in Dishonored 2. Yeah, the female protagonist. Uh, yes, the female protagonist, the daughter, she has a love interest, but that love interest only shows up in a letter and has a gender-neutral name. Mm -hmm. So basically, it, it, the the devs are basically saying, "Well, it's choose either either or, up to you." But uh, no, yes, choose your interpretation. But there's no ever. I don't think there's any on screen indication, one way or the other. There is a second uh, character. There's like in the standalone expansion sort of thing, Death of the Outsider. That 
individual, I also am not sure what her deal is. Mm. Anyways, continue, Mel. Uh, the third is Maya from Borderlands 2. Really? Mm. Right. Described as asexual and romantically attracted to Krieg. So basically, oh. demi rom demi demi romantic. Demi romantic ace ace, yeah. Uh, and the fourth, uh, Parvati Holcomb, uh, the Outer Worlds, which I'm fairly sure I have heard of because I'm fairly sure Gen has gushed about them. It's yes, uh, yeah, okay. So I think she's a romantic ace, actual, if I recall correctly. Yes. So yeah, not only Ace, is asexual, there very little romantic. asexual. Yeah. Uh, even of the asexual uh, rep, of what little there is, half of that isn't even a romantic rep as well. Yeah, it's arrow a- ace characters in general are very hard to find. They're very underrepresented, which is why I just would like more. No, I get you on that. I understand. I, I kind of wish there was more, too, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I am glad that Luffy is basically Arrow Ace, which is very nice visible rep for that, but... I'm pretty sure Luffy is Ace. Whether or not he's Aeromantic is... I'm not sure, because I cannot guarantee that Oda's not just going to have him end up with Hancock in the I epilogue. really, really fucking hope not. No, but it's like it's a drag. Like people were like, "Oh, dra- uh, Goku was." I'm sure people thought Goku was Arrow Ace, and then in the early days of Dragon Ball, and then you know, I doubt Goku that. is quite sexual. Yeah, Goku. I feel like Luffy is in a similar situation to Goku, where his sexuality is in in the real world. He would be Arrow Ace, but like Oda could decide to have funky things happen in the epilogue. Luffy is adventure sexual. According to Oda. Like, he's in love with adventure, and that's it. Well, that would make him adventure romantic. He doesn't get off on adventure. He's just in love with it. True, 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 true. <laughs> so, but we're getting sidetracked again. We should make that uh, distinction as well, now that we have, like, because we have the terminology for it. You should make a distinction between characters who, like, get off on something and characters who just really like something. Like, I'm pretty sure Goku is more fight romantic than fight sexual, because I'm pretty sure he doesn't get off on it. No, he doesn't. Vegeta does, though. Oh, Vegeta absolutely gets off on it. No, he's like, that's definitely how... This is probably why he's in love with Bulma, because she's the only person who can really fight him other than Goku. So his the two yes. great loves in his life are the only people who give him a thrill when fighting Goku and Bulma. Again, anyway, the, 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 issue is, the issue is in a lot of series, and you know, video games as well, the writers struggle with fucking female characters, so even when they're writing, you know, romantic love interests, generally the, you know, and it is generally, you know, male main characters, and then their, you know, male rivals, male close friends, are generally better written than the female characters, which results in a lot of hoey. Yeah. Do you so, think Spock and Kirk banged, like, at least once, just to try it? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I would not put it past Kirk not to do that. Kirk definitely Kirk. tried. I'm not sure if Spock actually allowed it. He probably did, but Kirk 100% tried. No, like, but early series Spock would not have been down for it, but I'm pretty sure late series Spock would yeah. have been down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Anyways, the question um, is, Leonard Nimoy or Zach... Okay, yes, back to video games. Uh, uh, speaking of ancient Greece, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, your player character can uh, be uh, isn't a that, robot. Isn't there some extremely problematic uh, things regarding that game? I think regarding the DLC rep- stuff, but uh, yeah, like, didn't, they, wrong. didn't they retroactively make the characters straight and then have kids in? That's only in the DLC, so I'm not in the DLC. 
Ah, uh, no, 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 DLC is canon, so, you know. Meh. So what did I, they I, do? I, 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 dis- I believe they had the options, but in the DLC, instead of, like, having it default, uh, instead of having it be what your character chose in the main game, they just defaulted to the straight option. I mean, that would still make them possibly buy, not, like... No, regardless of the character's... No, like, regardless of the character, like, if they they had the character end with a... If you played a female character, they had her end up with the dude option. And if you played the male character, they had you end up with the girl. Regardless of what you chose in the game. I think. I, I haven't played the DLC. I haven't even played the game. I just know that it's possible to, uh... You know, it's possible to actually, you know, play uh, the character as gay or bi. I don't know. Uh, I haven't played the DLC. All I know is that I've heard really awful shit about it, and uh, most people disregard it uh, as any kind of co- uh, canon. I, I think in, uh, when you're talking about rep, it's less the fan reception that you look at and more the developer decision-making. I mean, even the developer and decision-making, on- for the most part, allowed for... Um, allowed for gay characters, so... Except they apparently walked it back in the DLC. That's why I'm mentioning the DLC. Fuzzy, just just because they end up with an opposite sex character doesn't mean they're not bisexual. No, no, no. That's not not the problem. The problem is that it uh, disregards the choice you make in the... Oh, yeah, no, that's disregarding it. But, as, as I said, like, you're saying, like, it automatically makes them straight, which is not necessarily the case. No, it does I know, I know, I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. But that's, again, it's the... Oh, hang on. I think uh, I'll be right back. One second. But basically what I'm trying to say is it's the Watsonian versus Doylean problem all, all over again. And I'm saying that from it's problematic from the Doylean perspective, not the Watsonian one. Doyless. Doyless. Anyways. I think there's, you know, an element to be said that, because I'm, you know, I did just, you know, do some Googling. And the, basically, the uh, the explanation that was given was, uh, oh, the character uh, realized their own mor- morality and felt uh, the desire and duty to preserve their important lineage. Ah, uh, some... yeah, that's fine. Fairly heteronormative, child-centric bullshit. Yeah, I think that plays into Assassin's Creed and its weird central conceit of genetic memory. So, like, in order for an individual to be playable, they have to have descendants. Which is kind of fucked. Yeah, it's still bullshit, but... It is bullshit. And the in-universe explanation is kind of shitty. It makes sense, but it's shitty. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed also does portray um, Leonardo da Vinci as gay in the uh, Ezio storylines. Yes, I did see Ezio that. Games, which is pretty awesome. Because Implied. Leonardo da Vinci, it's never it, actually stated, really. Well, they they all but outright say it, if I'm being honest. he Da Vinci outright flirts with Ezio. More than once. Mm -hmm. So it's like pretty heavily implied. Fair, I guess. We can move on to other games. Uh, I want to mention. I want to mention Bug Snacks because Bug Snacks has a lot of rep. Because you've got. the leaders of the community, uh, Lisbeth and Egabel, who are lesbians, which is quite nice. Nice. Um, you've got Snoopy and Chandlo, who... Uh, well, Snoopy is gay, Chandlo is bisexual. Chandlo is a wonderful himbo as well. Nice. That, that's just... I find that entire sequence hilarious, because, like, the build-up of that storyline is working up to a confession... And then Chandler just casually r- reveals that he was under the impression they were already 
you know. He was already dead for like already years. Dead. Oh, Chandler, yeah. you glorious himbo, himbo. I love you so much. So I'm kind of just like... It was wonderful I, I, like, getting to watch no. getting to watch Bug Snacks via uh Yes, Isaac, I also Isaac watched it through Scott. Yeah, just so great because he was just so in love with Chandlow. <laughs> and look, but like Okay. Is that like just like you have to think about the implications of that uh scenario. Right? Like what it, 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 what were they not doing any sort of activities that would suggest to the Snoopy that like Snoopy it, and like, Snoopy, they, yes. they might have still been doing it, and he just thought it was like a friendship thing. I don't know, man. I yeah, like, well, I don't they know. They just go at it, and then Snoopy was just like, "Well, I guess we're really good friends." <laughs> like I wouldn't put it past. It's something that can happen. <laughs> or maybe it was like. Oh, this is an unusually chaste relationship, but whatever. I'm fine with it. That's the thing. Chandler is such a nice guy. He could possibly have done that. He it could have like he could have thought that like maybe uh, Snorpy is just like not into that. Yeah. Like, Meanwhile, uh, Snorpy is just thirsting, but thinks they're just friends. I don't blame. I'm um, just like that. Even, even misunderstanding is hilarious. Yeah. I like that entire storyline is just one of my favorite storylines in recent memory. Mm. I just I just like that, you know, storyline in general of just wait, have we been dating all this time? You didn't know? How could oh, you not man. know? You know funny this is one of the only examples I've seen of a but they were just roommates by one of the people in the relationship. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, wasn't Snorpy's whole deal like, well, yes, we're roommates. My roommate. He constantly refers to Chandler as his roommate. I think and just so, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's just like, I'm, uh, uh, there's an entire subreddit for this, you know? Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> It reminds me of another trope. This is this is not not anything I've seen in video games. Pretty much just stuff I've seen in in fan fiction, honestly. But uh, the whole uh, there's only one bed trope, but forcing it. So like how so? Like the genre where there's only one bed trope. Well, like so so the the big example that I've seen was a, was a Toto Deku fanfic where. Basically, of course it was. Of course it was. Yeah, Todoroki is so incredibly oblivious to like Izuku's attempts to confess that. Uh, I feel like you would not be the oblivious one in that relationship. I don't really care. This is generally genuinely one of the funniest fan fictions I've ever read because there's at one point Izuku is like complaining to uh, to Uraraka, and Uraraka is like. Well, Deku, you may just have to get naked. And Izuku just like, I tried that. <laughs> I tried that. He just went and got, went and warmed up a towel and gave it to me. He thought I'd been showering. I was dry. <laughs> just <laughs> and the eventual, the eventual like uh, climax to the to the fic is they're sharing like. Uh, a hotel room with separate beds. Izuku basically just runs in, shoves the bed together, flops down on them, and goes, Oh no, there's only one bed. What are we gonna do? God damn it. And finally Todoroki's just like, I feel like you're trying to send me a message here. So <laughs> fucking people, I swear. Yeah, okay, so let's... Okay, Bugs and X has a lot of great stuff. There are some issues, though. So, for example, it's got envy rep. That's yep. great. Mm -hmm. The problem is, said individual is the mad scientist character. Who did chop off their own leg at one point. I mean, they basically turn themselves into, um, almost, almost turn themselves into a bug snack to, you know. For science. For science. I mean, Which... if that's a mad scientist, I'm not particularly surprised. Yeah, they weren't, just, they a, weren't a, the it's... villain, though. 
Let's make that clear. Yes, they were not a villain. They were actually firmly on the protagonist's side. Mm. But at the same time, it's it's just like, there's like, I, I always am leery of making the character with Rep eccentric in some way. Because there's this whole stigma... I like, think I think if well, let me let me say my, let me say my thing real quick on this because mm-hmm. correct me if this is a dumb opinion but in my my personal belief if there is a sufficient amount of rep outside of this character it's all right if they are eccentric or a villain because like this is only one of many instances of rep in the uh, in the piece of media I think. I agree on the villain side of things. It, like, if you can have a villain, if there's like good rep as well to balance it out, the eccentricity just, 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 is a much more. Just, just for the villain thing, uh, just to interrupt, and we we will of course get into this, uh, you know, more next week. For the villain thing, it's fine as long as you know, being uh, LGBTQIA plus is not their like whole character. Huh? Yeah. As long as them, them, as long as them being uh, queer is not like the the main reason that they are, uh, or like the main contributing factor to their villainy. Mm-hmm. Like, if a, if yeah, a that's that's a fair. Uh, uh, puppies because they like kicking puppies. The a does not. Those two things are not related. Yes, uh, well, necessarily. Bisexual and. Uh, their sole character trait is raping people. Then that's, yeah, that's not that does not fly. No. Um, so yeah, uh, the other the leaders of the community. How do you feel about that? Because like that's kind of a, a more ambiguous, almost villainous scenario. I don't. Again, I don't think they are. I don't. I wouldn't consider them the villains. Like, um, it's. I mean, what's your what's her name? Uh, Lisbeth or Agabel? Lisbeth. She's just a dick in general. That has nothing to do with her orientation. She's just a dick. And again, I mean, you the know, be an asshole without yes. being evil. That's the thing. I yes. like. They are complex characters, which is good. We 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 want complex characters. Um, I don't. I would it say isn't... That's why characters be assholes. It's as long as they're not it's like. It's just like eternally fascinating to me. It's eternally fascinating to me that of all of the games that has such a complex character, like morality and dynamics and things like that. It's freaking bug snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That game has no right to be as like morally complex and like in general good as it is. <laughs> like, there's no reason that game should be any good. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you know it is, else? and it's hilarious. You know you know what else is a game that we could talk about that is the surprising amount and depth of character of uh, rep? Stardew Valley. Okay, I would like to talk about yeah, 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 yeah. I would like to talk about Star- Stardew Valley is like kind of my optimal scenario in that regard. Yes, just it, everyone, just make everyone an option. That's great, but they, but. Actually, Stardew Valley is an example of that thing that uh, we were talking about, where uh, you can have the grab bag as well as the the character options. Because in Stardew Valley, there's rep both, like, not only is everyone an option, there's also rep outside of the options. Hello? Yes. Yeah. No, just letting you talk. Yeah. Or am I wrong on that? Or like, I just uh, don't remember, but I, I I can't remember specific examples. Again, I'm going off. I'm going off wiki. Wikipedia, Wikipedia lists here. one example, but yeah. um, I'm sure there are others. Probably are others. Yeah. Um. 
I I just I just haven't gotten that far into um, Stardew Valley is, is part of the issue. Um, Same. I, I just know that you can romance anyone in Stardew yeah. Valley. Which is pretty rad still. Another thing... Uh, you know what's another good one is... Um, oh. Okay, monster, okay. Monster problem. Yeah? Uh, just, like, one... Uh, can I just, like, a, a quick aside on Stardew Valley? Mm. Sure. Y'all think someone made an NTR mod for Stardew Valley? No, we're not talking about no. that. No. No NTR. <laughs> It probably does exist, though. Don't care. Ignore it. Again, and I and the uh, mill will meet you. Yeah, mm. I have that power. I've never played Monster Prom. Is, isn't that just like Monster Prom also has the same thing as Stardew novel? Valley, where you can romance everyone, regardless of your gender. Yeah. Okay. Also, one of the player characters I'm pretty sure is non-binary. Yeah, I believe that's um, Oz. Yeah, Oz. Yeah, Monster Prom is really good. Um, uh, the, I know there are also several side characters who are also um, romanceable, uh, or not romanceable, who are also queer. Hmm. I'm trying to remember which ones. Yeah, it'll come to me eventually, probably. But yeah, Monster Prom has a lot of um, LGBTQ uh, characters. And it's the thing you said where uh, you can romance uh, all the characters you can romance are by, plus there's an extra rep outside of that as well. And Which to me is the there. optimal that is the optimal way of handling things. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is also just like, you can also have it where it's like you're playing as a singular romance where it's like two characters of the same sex and that's the central romantic storyline. Like, that's the case with a lot of uh, visual novels. Like, um, Heart of the Woods is uh, one of the ones I've played, where it's uh, just entirely uh, a lesbian romance is at the center of the but Yeah, that's what I game. mean. Is like, that, like, I'm of the opinion, like, if you have a canon story thing with no other options, then, then go for it. Like, don't necessarily, you don't have to make it all encompassing. I'm just talking about the ones where you have multiple options. Hmm. I mean, there's also uh, games where you play a, a player character of a fixed gender, but you also have bisexual... Uh, you have multiple options of more than one gender. Like, I know there are a couple of Otome games. I mean, like Hades that. is an example of that. Like that. Which one? Hades. Which Hades, we already yeah. talked about is an example of that, yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah, Hades only has uh, two romance options, but still, yeah. Hey, Ace Rep is in uh, Monster Prom. Well, oh, yeah. Tiger Coach. Yeah, that, yeah, he turns you down when you try to hit on him because he's not interested. He apparently regularly attends a, a support group for asexual people in a world so sexualized it might as well be a dating sim. <laughs> wow, that's... Okay, that's good. I, a like, game you should play, Fuzzy. You would vibe with it so hard. No, I've heard of that, like... Oh! Fun, for, uh, fun story! Um, this is actually, actually I'm, I'm going to talk about this off stream. Uh, remind me, Jack, to bring up the, my Monster Prom story off stream. Okay. But yeah. Um. It, it, but you get romance games uh, that uh, focus on a particular romance. Uh, oh, another visual novel I, I should bring up is uh, Valhalla, mm. which I've been, uh, which I played a, uh, a bunch of. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, beat that game. Is, yeah. Tagus is by, and uh, her main love interest is a pan woman. But uh, she all. Uh, oh, no, it's entirely one sided. Well, <laughs> uh, no, it depends you on how you play the game. It is possible to make the uh, romance reciprocal. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? It's just hard. From what I've heard, it's just hard to do. Because I've, like, also... I've. I cleared the game 100%, and in, in none of the. Endings or options? Did that happen? Uh, I've, from what I've heard, it's possible, but uh, I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that there are several. Uh, there are several other characters who are also LGBT, mostly lesbian and bisexual characters, but there is also a gay character and an agender character. 
Mm, there's also a trans individual off screen. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the supporting casts uh has a trans sibling. Yeah, I remember that. Uh but no, uh, one of the patron uh one of the patrons of the titular bar is uh gay and another one is a gender. But most of the rep in Valhalla is bi, pan, or lesbian women. And whatever the hell... It's really a bad thing. To be fair, the agendered character is a disembodied brain in a jar. Which is quite interesting. Well, no, because a brain, a brain can still have a gender. I'm not saying they yeah. can't. I'm just saying it's quite interesting the character, character choice. does not believe in gender, though. Is a thing, and requests not to be referred to with the uh, gender pronouns. Again, I'm not. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just. It just, you know, perked my interest. Yeah, it's neat. It's really neat. Valhalla is a fun game. Yeah. Um. Oh. Speak. Speaking no. of speaking of agenda. Dream Daddy, yeah. Dream Daddy. I did want to uh, bring that up at some point. I mean, that game is, like, specifically built for rep. So, is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's supposed to be uh, for the for gay uh, individuals or people who like gay romance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely a, a Kaiser Neko's game of choice. It was a shame that in that playthrough they went for the Christian break up the marriage one option. option that does not end up end well. Yeah, sort of a shame yeah, on Scott, that front. You could have gone for literally anybody else. I mean, it's in character. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, you can I mean, also. I would expect Scott to go for the bear. I think it didn't help that uh, Ben was also there. I, I, ah. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched that playthrough. Ben was, in fact, also there and yeah, I know pushing he, I know, hard for the priest. I, I know he was there. I can't remember what he, what he was pushing for specifically. Um, you can also you can also play as a trans man, uh, and there is a trans male character. Yep, which is neat. The trans male yeah, character uh, most... being the vampire? Question mark. It, mm. it, yes, the trans male character was the vampire. Yeah, but there are still a grand total of seven romanceable characters, two of whom are gay and five of whom are bisexual. And all of whom are daddies. Oh, they are all daddies. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all, it's almost funny how most uh, LGBTQ rep in video games has at least some dating sim elements. I mean, it, it's really not. It's like, oh, there's it's very clear reasons for that. Yeah, okay, yes. Well, it doesn't translate well over a uh, choppy Discord call. That is fair. I, I was being an asshole there. I don't apologize, though. So, Disco, Disco Elysium has some, uh, has some rep. Oh, yeah. Isn't it like the main relationship, like, very homoerotic, well, but so, nothing happens because both of them are idiots. So your partner Kim is definitely gay, uh, and you can um, <laughs> you can basically play the main character as as bi, because uh, at some point you can um, basically. Start, I feel like start... the main character's orientation is whatever he can get. <laughs> you can start thinking about his orientation, and basically the answer is. An act of murder inv investigation is not the right time for him to be ex obsessing about his sexuality. <laughs> oh, man, that's like one of the best times. I've heard good things about Discolysium. I'll play it eventually. Same. It's just it's just a hard game to get into the uh, into the mood. Oh yeah. For. Yeah. There's also like games like Skyrim and such where it's like you can romance uh, one of several NPCs and you don't and your gender and the NPC's gender aren't really super relevant to your choice to romance them you can romance them and uh, it doesn't matter uh, you can be uh, 
get further by. Mm. So his, all cool. his, uh, his potential bad one, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh yeah, Trevor, the asshole. One, one of three playable characters and the most insane of the three. Who is bisexual. Yep. Like, on the one hand, it's great that uh, one of the playable characters is bi. On the other hand, it's not great that uh, said character is, again, insane. the most... Insane. About them. Like I'm always leery, right? Whenever they introduce uh, character, because like you get a lot of Trevors, mm. Mm. even when it comes to playable or protagonist characters. Where rep, yes, but we kind of wish it was anyone but this guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember something like that coming... Oh, yeah. It's something else. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, no. Um, it would be one thing if it was just one of several rep individuals. But it's quite another if it's like, this is the only rep we get, and it's this asshole. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Especially because um, Jack, did you play GTA Fire Emblem? And... What was that? Did you play Fire Emblem Three Houses? I have only played Three Houses. Yes, there is actually a lot of rep in that one. Yeah, that's why I was bringing it up. Uh, yeah, Fire um... Emblem suffers from the same problem to me that Mass Effect suffers from, where it just like make everyone an option, regardless. There is a surprising number of buy options in uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is nice. Uh, it would just be nicer if there were more. But at the same time, like, not everyone is going to be attracted to you if you're, like, no, under I... certain circumstances. Yeah. Like, there are some characters who you can't romance bisexually who are hinted to be bisexual. Mm. Which is a damn shame, because it'd be like, why can't I romance this character? They're clearly bi. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the most worse, isn't it? I mean, that's oh, what I've been, that's what I've been time, saying like, internally with Kanji. At the same time, like, you can kind of understand if it's like, oh, they're only attracted to this specific person of the same gender because of who this person is. Like, that's definitely the case with, like... Uh, at which point they're more demi than bi. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... But, no, there's, like, a good half dozen or so, more than half a dozen characters in Fire Emblem who are bi and romanceable. I think it's like two or three guys and uh, five or six women. There, that is always the ratio, isn't it? Like it always ratio, seems to, yeah. yeah, it always it, seems to lean towards like again, which for reasons that are deeply rooted in misogyny and uh, heteronormativity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look. I'm glad that there's still uh, bisexual options for both men and women. That's still good. It's just, it'd be nicer if it was a more even balance. It's it's good that there's like three bi men and five bi women. It'd just be nice if it was five and five. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. You know? Like, I, that's, what, that's where you're coming from, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it doesn't even have to be perfectly even. Just if if only the school be, wasn't be so... Yeah, if it, it... it Like, it literally one doubling the other is a bit excessive. Yeah, let me, let me double check the exact ratio in terms of, like, romanceable, anyways. I'll let because you do that, and then I, have, recall... then I have a point of order. Okay, yes. so the player character, there are... Three uh, romanceable male characters, and there are five romanceable female characters. Yeah. So yeah, point of order. Male, that yes. There's one female character you can't romance as a woman. Hmm. So yeah, there's a trans character in Pokemon. I'm sorry. What now? Pokemon X Pokemon. and Y. The character called Nova. Who is, huh. who, is a, who is a Pokemon me... trainer, trainer. 
She, uh, again, going from the notes, she is a uh, beauty, an exclusively female trainer class. Oh, right, okay, so... She used okay, to be so a black belt, an exclusively I... male trainer class. So, yeah, I don't know if that... I think that was, like, a translation error or something. Like, it, I, I don't think apparently it was in the Japanese, necessarily... Apparently, in the Japanese version of the game, she explicitly credits her transformation to medical science, but this was cut... Oh, cut okay, never mind. Version. It was more explicit in the translation. I thought it was the other way around. Okay, yeah, I forgot about her. Oh, wild. Nice. Though, to be fair, she is, like, one of four dozen... Uh, trainers of that archetype in the game and also completely missable. So it, it feels very much like uh, very token, the Disney yeah. sort of representation. Very tokeny. Yeah. Or, I, actually, I know, I don't think it was tokeny. I think it was more one person in the dev team snuck it in. Hey, if they did, good for them. Yeah. Yes, it it definitely seems like something that would probably not fly if you brought it up to Game Freak or Pokemon Team or Nintendo or whatever. Yeah. But one person managed to sneak it in. Mm. Mm. Which is its own can of worms. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh. Anyways, uh, back to, uh... Oh, you know what else general. is interesting? Uh, uh, you know what else has uh, oh, interesting sure. rap? Mm -hmm. Go what? ahead, Jack. That had the lesbian characters? What? Your Automata. Yeah. They did. No, no, that was... Like, yeah, 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 no, no, like, two of the operators were just straight up banging, yes. Right. Uh, I think it was very much veiled and implied because Japan is still consistent, consi consisting of cowards. No, to be outright confesses her love to a, another female android and gets shot down. Yeah, and talks about with uh, one of the main characters. To be, yeah. Uh, uh, an OG near. No. Uh, what did OG near have? An it? intersex Echo? character. Yeah. I, I don't know how their name is pronounced. The character who would later become the model for Kay? 2B. Probably Kaine. Kaine? Yes, Kaine. I, it's, it's, it's Japan. You never know how uh, these names that are pronounced. The accent makes me think it's Kaine. Uh, yes. Let's see if the wiki gives any explanation. No. Okay. Yes, they are, in fact, intersex. No. You know what's an interesting example of rep? Elden Ring. Right, um, right. There is, in fact, a romanceable character that is romanceable regardless of the player's gender. Yep. Ronnie, right? Yes. Speaking of which, the player can be literally any uh, gender or sexuality you want them to be. So, uh, I'm pretty sure Ronnie is the only character you can romance. Yes, like, it's the only not... one because that's part of the storyline. Because sadly, Elden Ring has not. You know what? You think Elden Ring would have been even better received if it also had dating sim elements? Oh, definitely. Well, that's not really how uh, From Soft rolls. Nope. Look, they, I have like, hope after like, Ronnie. They like drip feeding story. Yeah. From Soft doesn't really do like hard, uh, thick story. <laughs> Sometimes they do. Not usually. I mean, you can literally propose marriage to a character in Bloodborne. Neat. Also, that actually, no, now that I think about it, that's also gender uh, neutral. Like, regardless of the player's gender. And, the re and of course, the character turns you down either way, but they turn you down in such a way that suggests that were it not for their duties, they would be interested. Regardless. That's neat. Of course, Blood Man is also a little crafty in horror, so, you know. <laughs> that's, uh, is that, uh, it's maybe oh, for the best. This is interesting. Uh -huh. uh, the house that House and Father Morgana has a uh, trans intersex character. What is that? 
The House of Fata Morgana is a, uh, I think it's a horror visual novel. Terrifying. I am pretty sure you would vibe with it just because of the uh, gothic aesthetic. I would like it because of the gothic aesthetic, but also I am a coward. Fuzzy, you've played horror games on stream before. They're, like, not scary ones, though. Ah, look at it. See if it's, it suits you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have uh, the classic uh, cast full of gay characters, uh, visual novels, stuff like Kindred Spirits on the Roof, which is literally consists almost yeah, exclusively of love. No, yeah, but then, like, that's... I feel like that... Okay, here's an interesting question. I don't know that you can call that rep if that is the subgenre that it is in. You're right. I feel like it's... Yeah, so, like, is it rip, or is it just, like, explicitly that's what the genre is? Because to me, I I suppose, I suppose, but to me, there's a difference between a specific subgenre and a more mainstream title having, like, that's what, that's what representation says to me usually. I, I understand if that's not the usual definition, but to me, the idea of representation suggests the existence of those characters in a genre that is not exclusively a, a based around those characters. Eh, that's a bit iffy, honestly. I, I feel like, like representation, I, I... representation in my mind is characters uh, of a minority being presented in a piece of media uh, and characterized at least in part based off of that minority status. Not necessarily defined by it, but having some characterization... Uh, right, but I'm saying that that makes it like... That, that makes it so that basically any sort of, like, Yuri or Yaoi visual novel or work in that vein is rep. And, like, is that... Is that still rep if it's, like, that's the reason it's made? I don't know, Mel. What do you think? I'm leaning more towards your side of it, Jack. I I think even if it is in a part of I think it is that there's there's not en- it's a, there's not enough it's, there's not enough rep out there in general to be able to say oh just because this is you know part of a certain genre where every character is uh is is gay lesbian bi whatever. Like, you can't take that away still. Like, it's still yeah. worthwhile. Also, they are subgenres, and they're not, like, super ubiquitous works. So, like, they are only a small representation of, like, dating sims as a whole, for instance. That's a fair point, yeah. So, I still think they would qualify as rep, at least within the broader part of the genre. Mm-hmm. At the very least. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. Of course, you do have stuff like visual novels like um, Life is Strange, where you will have the option to play a character who is bisexual. (laughs) So Life is Strange is a very weird, weird, weird one to me, because, like, the gay option really does not end well either way. So it's like, there's some unfortunate implications there. That is a weird one. Because if I recall correctly, uh, spoilers, by the way, um... If I recall correctly, the the gay option, either she dies or you kiss her and th- the town gets destroyed. Yeah, either she dies or everyone else dies. Well, not necessarily everyone else dies so much as the town just gets destroyed and possibly everyone in it. It's apparently very vague. I haven't played the game. I, mean, I don't know. And also, there's the uh, prequel in which it does feature the character who dies, or is... What was it? Uh, you know Thomas, what I mean. Right? No, 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 that's the, that's the sequel. I'm before talking about the, the prequel. Storm, before the Storm. Yes, Before the Storm. I'm pretty sure they... Uh, it also features the character... In fact, one of the characters in that romance is the character whose murder kicks off the entire plot of the uh, game proper. So that's also got some unfortunate implications. Yeah, that's a bit... 
not great. So yeah, in the only two examples of that happening, neither of them end well. I've heard that the later games in the series are better about it, but I could be in They do have better... Um, I don't know about 2. I think True Colors is better about it. I think 2 is just kind of a bad game in general. Haven't played any of them? I wouldn't know. All I know is I've heard things. And I've heard varying things. Hmm. Yeah, There's uh, a Hollow Knight is a game that has rep. I did I did mention Hollow Knight a little bit earlier, but uh, sort of got lost in the uh, shuffle. Yeah, because uh, yeah, like um, main character is what a gender. Yeah, a gender. Uh, there's also a gay couple. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Didn't they die, though? Uh, so... Okay, no. So, they can... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so if you... clear out the inventory of one of them, then they consider their life's work complete and then go off and die, and the other one follows shortly after. Right. I think. So they don't have to die, but in the event that you're going for 100% completion, they do, in fact, die. Wonderful. Oh, boy. It's not a very feel-good game, that game. Mm. I've heard Hall It's very Day Dark souls kind of in which... Yeah, no, it's a depressing. It's like, it's very it, it's a souls like, right? And that's the thing about souls games is generally, if you complete a character's quest line, they die. Mm. Not all the time, but in a lot of cases, the completion of a character's quest line means either they just like die during the quest line, or they just like die after it's done. So do we want to uh, do we want to talk about some uh, big AAA games and how they do? Sure. I.e. badly. Uh, like Detroit Become Human? Detroit Become Human? <laughs> that's a possible one. Uh, I mean, some of these are ones that I have not played or even seen played, so I can't say for sure. So speak up if you have, you know, either watched them be played or played them yourself. Uh, so, Last of Us? I have not played Last of Us. I've heard the first, uh, from what I've heard, the first one's pretty good, and the second one is very, um... Controversial. Device. Yes. Yes. But you don't I have don't... to, like, the second one is basically just, uh, revenge porn. Yeah, that's the thing. It is I don't think it's controversial because of its portrayal of rep, it's more because of the storyline. Which is sort yeah, of, you know, I mean, depressing. The storyline is very typical revenge porn. Uh, and it's like, funnily enough, it ends on an anticlimax because, like, the character chooses to break the cycle of hatred, but they've already done such atrocious things up to that point that it rings hollow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they basically, act, honestly, what they did is worse than just uh, killing the primary antagonist of their story. Because what they didn't said is they killed everyone the antagonist loved and then spared the antagonist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, one might argue, that's even worse. Yeah. So, in terms of uh, rep characters uh, in in the second one, we've got uh, Ellie, the main character, and uh, her uh, partner, Dina. Mm -hmm. uh, Ellie is specifically lesbian, I believe, and Dina is bi or pan. Um, and there is a character uh, called Lev, who is uh, a trans male. Mm-hmm. Who does survive? So you know, yay. Uh, incidentally, uh, Ellie's first girlfriend in the DLC of 
game one. The yeah. first uh, game, yeah. The first game does die horribly. Mm. Shocker. So make of that what you will. Oh, you know what's a big AAA game that has a surprising amount of rep? Mm -hmm. What? Saints Row 4. Oh, Saints Row, yeah. Saints Row is fine. Yes. Saints Row is like... It gets wackier and wackier as the games go on, culminating in 4, in which it's just a straight-up superhero game. Uh, it, it even riffs on it. But basically, there's no dating sim elements. You just walk up to the characters and they're like, let's bang. And then they're like, okay. Cool. So, but yes, it is completely anyone can go for anyone. There's a very interesting... There is a very interesting uh, piece of dialogue, though. Oh? One of the characters, uh, when you initiate that uh, romance is like, I don't usually swing that way, but I'll give it a shot, regardless of your player's gender. Interesting. Okay. So, a uh, character basically discovering goodbye. Yes, but the one of the more funny explanations I've seen is that character is someone who is infamously kind of scared of the player character, like, it's played for comedy, it's, like, one of their close friends who is just, you know, you know the, the uh, dynamic I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Kinda. And the one possibly uh, fan theory for the explanation is that they generally, they're so scared of the boss, which is the how the player character is referred to as, that they specifically go for whatever the gender the boss is not. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. But yes, no, that just it's very interesting that that character has that line of dialogue regardless of your player hmm. character's gender. Yeah. Um do any of us really want to talk about Cyberpunk 2077? No. no. I've already I had to talk about it in an essay and I didn't enjoy it. Mostly because I had no idea what the fuck I was actually talking about because I've not played it, and the only time I saw people playing it was right at the start when it was fucking terrible. Oh, <laughs> because, that's hilarious. Because no computer outside of, you know, like, futuristic supercomputers could run it properly. <laughs> that's surprising. But hey, I mean, you can apparently... Supercomputers can really run it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but hey, you can you your character can be trans or non binary. Though if I recall correctly, it doesn't really no, it matter doesn't, at it doesn't all. It doesn't matter at all, because nothing matters in that game. <laughs> mm hmm Um getting off of uh AAA games, uh, uh no no no. On on the subject of AAA games, there's one that I'm surprised none of you have uh, talked about. Yeah. Oh. Yakuza. Ah, uh, Yakuza. Yeah, Yakuza. That's not Kaido. Yakuza definitely has some has uh, a surprising amount of rep, frankly. Yeah. Like, um, because it has. I mean, the the big one is, of course, um, the uh, can't remember which one it's from. I think it's from three. Um, right. of the uh, of the trans character admitting it to uh, to Kiryu and you know Kiryu being the king that he is just goes so <laughs> that's cool good for you <laughs> you're living your best life go for it <laughs> cause he's a king among men damn it <laughs> Kiryu is also great. That one... heard of him. isn't there also that one rival gang leader that just really wants to bang Kiryu would you blame them? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to fucking bang, uh... I'm specifically bang talking about the one with the eye patch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he even calls him Kiryu-chan. Oh, Majima. 
Oh yes, Majima, that's his name. But no, um, did you? Did the reason you know, I bring up Yakuza is Majima's that Yakuza name? Three was a long time ago. Yeah. So like the fact that it just straight up it was ahead of its time, very much so. Oh yeah. Yakuza Three was like early two thousands, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. It was on the PS Two. Oh dang. And Yakuza Zero, I think, is the most recent one besides Like a Dragon. And I think Yakuza Zero was mid two thousand tens. Unless you're not counting the Kiwamis. I'm not counting uh, the Kiwamis. Yakuza, Those are remakes. Yakuza Three was released in two thousand nine on PS Three. Huh. Oh, okay. I thought it was on PS2 up to 3. Maybe, uh, I guess it was just on that might have 1 been and 2 the, were on PS2. That might have been in the West. I'm not 100% sure. That's just what I'm seeing. Mm. Mm. Nope. Released for PlayStation 3 2009. Hmm. Yeah, it was 2 then. Because I remember seeing a PS2 Yakuza on a store shelf some at some point, but it must have been 2, not 3. Yeah. Yeah, man, where were you going before um, that? Uh, Undertale. Mm. Undertale. And the yes. Undertale, you know, just general franchise. Because I'm fairly sure the main character of Deltarune is uh, is MB. Or one of them, anyway. Mm. That would not surprise me. Uh, Chris? You know... Yeah, you know what's funny about Deltarune? Mm. Or, not, not Deltarune, Undertale. I feel like that is definitely a relationship between Undine and what's her name? Alphys. 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 Alphys and Undine. Do y'all get the Snorpy Chandler vibes from it? I've the... not played Undertale, so that's you basically know. it. It has similar vibes where Alphys is kind of just like crushing on Undine and is like, "Help me confess" and all that. But they're already very close and hang out with each other all the time to the point that I'm wondering if Undine is under the impression that they're already going out. Right. Because Undine yeah. is very much the himbo of the game. Yeah. Like, they even have the same character archetype. Mm-hmm. Would not be surprising. Um, and... Oh, this is... The last one okay, I want to mention, yeah. uh, Psychonauts 2. Yes! With uh, Helmet and Bob. That's great. I, I've played neither Psychonauts game, so... I can't comment one way or the other. I haven't played either of them. They're both very good, even if one has... In terms of the gameplay, rather than anything else, has aged uh, slightly poorly. It's still, a, it's still a good game, and it's still one I definitely enjoyed playing. Um, as somebody who, you know, didn't play it when it first came out and played it in the 2010s for the first time. It's also, like, one of the very few games I've platinumed, so... That's impressive. It's not a hard... It's, I say it's not... It's not a hard platinum, it's just a, like... Tedious. A tedious one, yes, I would say. But yeah, so there's, you know, two uh two gay characters. They have a wedding. And Aww, uh, that's nice. Yeah. And they're, you know, very much in love and it's great. I love it. Hamlet and Bob are great too. Oh. Just as as an aside, y'all wanna hear a funny story from my childhood, i.e. when I was in high school debate club. That is the just like now? high school debate debate club. I thought you said the date club for a second. I was like, what the hell is a no. date club? No, so, we didn't so, have those in high school. We weren't a cool high school. So, debate club, did you do a lot of masturbating? <laughs> I just, like, there's... Why? <laughs> we're, we're talking about children here. I, no, I asked a legitimate question. I asked a legitimate question. Whether you did a lot of mass debates. If you want to read more into that, that's your filthy mind, sir. Bill, they yes, were clearly master debaters. 
So get off. Yes. Of that okay. On this. Uh, apparently, we're all still twelve, but uh, <laughs> that's I'm nothing new. Actually, twelve with my sense of humor. <laughs> but yeah, so this is why there are consequences for not listening to the comic book nerds. We were having a debate over which uh, major comic book franchise had better rep or something along those lines. Mm. Oh boy. Uh, Marvel or DC. And, and I was specifically like, they were trying to bring up some points about like, I was on the DC team and there, everyone was trying to bring up points about how, they should say the DC did it earlier, and I'm like, y'all, the X-Men had a massive gay wedding in, like, the 70s. Or, like, very early, or, like, early in the 80s. And, like, they were like, yeah, but they won't know that, and guess what? They knew that, and we kind of dropped hard in that particular round of the debate, so, you know. Unsurprising. Listen to the comic book nerd. <laughs> Is what I'm trying to say. When your debate is about yeah. comic books. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, X-Men had just like a massive gay wedding in like the 80s. Good. Excellent. Good for them. Hmm. To be fair, though, the X-Men literally were invented as an allegory for basically every type of minority under the sun. Yeah. So that's really not that surprising in, the, in hindsight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not surprising in the slightest oh man that is disappointing what uh there's no uh certainly according to the list um on wikipedia there's no uh poly characters in video games i mean that's just patently patently untrue we just talked about hades also, it, it basically ignores a lot of visual novels. But I don't blame it for that. Mm -hmm. In the mainstream, definitely, I don't think it exists. Yeah, most of the visual novels uh, that would come to mind are uh, not mainstream ones. To put it lightly. Still a shame. I mean, visual novels in general are not really mainstream. Mm. There are mainstream visual novels. You, you got your Steins Gates, you got your uh, Umineko's, you got your uh, you got your Danganronpas and stuff. You know exactly what I mean when I say not mainstream. Mm. Yes, no, I know. It's anything that hasn't gotten an anime adaptation. Yes, that's definitely what I was talking about. No, I know what you were talking about. I was trying to save some face for you. Yes, yes, no, I'm agreeing with you, Fuzzy. My voice is totally natural. Mm hmm. Yep, we're definitely <laughs> no talking about visual novels played for the story. Yes. Definitely. Why else would you play visual novels if not for the story? Visual novels have a yeah. lot of plot going on. Yeah, like, like that's why people play the original Fate Stay Night. Yeah, for the plot. God, like, Fate is, like... I think Fate, actually. Like, I'm kind of surprised that... I'm, it's kind of mind-boggling that it still has not been localized. Like, or at least Officially. it had localized a while ago, but it wasn't no. superficial. Well, no. Here's the thing. I think they want to distance themselves from the original Fate the visual novels, because of the success of FGO. That would not surprise me, actually. Because FGO is much more tame. Also, okay, somewhat relevant, how do you classify Astolfo? Astolfo is bisexual, I know. And, well, like, uh, explicitly, yes, but like, just like... And gender non-conforming male. Yeah, that's about the only thing you can... The only way you can... Manage that, but yeah, a, a gender non conforming by dude, basically. There are a lot of bi characters in FGL, mostly female characters, but a, uh, a fair number of male characters as well. Yeah, but it's like it's in the same way that 
there's uh it's in the same way that review starlight is a yuri series it's the it's the I, japan I would, style i would not really say that fuzzy how did how like, did the movie do by the way uh it was gayer than the show somehow Again, like, if it didn't say anything outright, then I'm still going to be like, it's Japaning it. That's really not fair. Like, it, it's very strong queer coding, even if it's not explicit about it. And saying, like, it's lesser for not being explicit is just really unfair to stories that couldn't be explicit. I think it's, it's a... That's an entirely different conversation, but I think it's more of a... It's a time and place and context. Before, it's, it is a conversation we've had before, but I, I still maintain it's a contextual thing. Regardless, I still think it's unfair to say like a story with queer co- with very strong queer coding is lesser than a story with explicit queer rap. Yeah, I mostly just make fun of Starlight just like out of because of the noise, uh, the, the the cult in, in our server. Yes. Yeah, at this point, I understand it completely, considering you know skate. Mm-hmm. No, I also acknowledge that it is. I just wish it was. Oh more yeah, I absolutely. Wish it was, it was more explicit, more, but you know. But like, when you have like a really, but, really I, okay. What I should say. What I should duet. say. What I should say is that I'm not upset with Starlight the show. I'm more upset with the culture in Japan that forces it to be quoted instead of explicit. That's yes. understandable. Yes. Uh. No, but no, FGO like has uh, characters who are explicitly in love with the protagonist, regardless of gender. I sometimes forget that the character's gender is uh, a clear player. choice, because yes. like you see, you don't see the like. It, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Is like um, FF fourteen has this problem actually, in that uh, the player character is always in the trailers and everything portrayed as generic white human man. Mm. Even though there's, like, a lot of different skin tones, races, and, like, gender options for the player character. And this is something that a lot of series suffer from that have a variable player character, is generally the player character is represented as the most generic white man. Not always, but often, yes. No, Usually, and I feel like that, FGO, that does happen with F, FGO. Is like most of, a lot, I, a lot of the promotional material I've seen features the male player character. Mm-hmm. Well, something FGO does have that uh, I think is cool is uh, several characters who are uh, non-binary or trans. Uh, Chevalier Dion is a, is a summonable character, for instance, uh, and I believe uh, the the that person was historically a trans woman. <laughs> And and Kudo in the game is also uh, non-binary, and referred to yeah. with they them uh, pronouns. Yeah, I'm like, that's okay. Though I am a bit leery whenever you bring up historical figures in relation to the Fate series, because you know. The gender bending, yes. Yes, so... Honestly, with that series, uh, um, I it's better it. it's not very, to look... It's, it's, it's better to look at the character in series than it is to look at the individual in the actual mythology or history. It, it, in the game, I believe Dayon is treated as uh, a very uh, androgynous character, but uh, does fall in line with uh, the historical individual's transness. If I recall correctly, I haven't used the character a lot because they're not high tier. It's a gameplay thing. Yes, I know. I, I get it. Um, yeah, so, I, I don't know. I'm a bit I, leery I will, on will, rep in I, any sort of waifu game. I Understandable. Understandable. Like, of, you can defend FG all you want, but you cannot say it's not a waifu game. Oh, I will not deny that it is. Uh, it is a bit more gender balanced than most waifu games. I will be, 
to be fair, but like it is still 100% a white. Mm-hmm. I black feel like the only there. reason it's gender balanced is because the source material already had gender balance. I yeah. feel like if FGO was no. just the the only source of the faith mythos, I feel like there would be zero gender balance. Like, I feel like all of the gender balance is an artifact of the previous Fate games. I, I mean, that's not that bad. It's a good artifact to have. You no, know, it's, it's a good thing, but, like, at the same time, uh, I don't think it's to the game's credit, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's most a, of the most successful, like, half of the most successful uh, uh, gotchas are gender balanced. You got your FGOs, you got your Fire Emblem Heroes, you got your Grand Blue Fantasies. And on the other hand, the other half are basically all waifu, uh, are pure waifu games. Yeah, so you got your Kantai Collection, you've got your... Azure all Lane. of the ship, all of the anthropomorphic uh, vehicles and or weapons games. Yeah, uh, are... well, I think the ships at least are somewhat justified in that ships are historically referred to with female pronouns. What about the guns, the though? Soldiers. I can't justify that. Yeah. Um, and also... Uh... There was one other thing I was going to bring up uh, in on the subject of mobile games. Oh yeah, Genshin has... The Genshin gender ratios are definitely skewed. I'm not right? surprised. Like, I'm pretty sure there's only a, a few notable male characters and the rest are all waifu bait. Shocker. Who's the... I feel like I the most the vast majority of the fan art I see is of male characters. That might in just Gensh- be because of the world you run in. in Gensh- yes, yeah. no, I think that's a yeah, is I that think a, that's a you problem. Is Mel. that a uh, the stuff I cultivate on my timeline thing? Yes. Yes, Mill. Definitely. Yes. Are, I'm pretty sure it's like a two to one gender ratio, my friend. I think I can only think of like two male characters off the top of my head in that entire game. I'm not. There's probably more. Game. Yeah, there's probably more. But it's the hot dude and the Shoda. There's literally yeah. the only two that commonly appear outside of the waifus. Mm-hmm. I think there's Anyways, more than that, but... There's probably more than that, but no one cares about the other ones except in certain circles. Mm-hmm. Whereas everyone wants to bang Zong Li. Mm-hmm. Also, um, what was I going to say? We should get back onto video games. I think we're... I, I, think well, we should I mean, mobile games are video games, but also we should probably think about ending it because we're yeah. like... We're past two hours we're now. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, it's about time to wrap up, I think. Yeah. Because like, if we had to go through this comprehensively, one stream is not enough. Mm. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, okay, he, here's, here's one last question. Because here's, we haven't played every video game. Yeah, here's one last question. Okay. Um, there was uh, there was an Arthur's uh, video game released in 1992 that mm-hmm. has the character that was uh, that has since been revealed as gay. Does that count as rap? Retcons don't count, I think. Especially because the character in question, I'm pretty sure, is like had no sort of indications for decades, and then was suddenly uh, just chosen out of the blue to be the rep character. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't think that that counts. Also, apparently, the fucking uh, Harry Potter mobile game has rep. Look, we don't talk about that property in that context at all i mean one of the rep is dumbledore saying we know from the harry potter saga and fantastic beast saga that he's a gay man no we fucking don't yeah we know because so, jk yes, Rowling I pulled think... it out of her ass yes uh she's a transfer by the way fuck her yep. yes so yeah um 
I think we can safely, safely end it wrap now. It up. Okay, then. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching, as always. Uh, in terms of future stuff, tomorrow will be the return of D&D. &D. Um, we're going to jail. Yay. <laughs> Jack's character is going to have an AC of nine. Yeah, because I have very bad AC when I don't have armor. <laughs> I at least have an AC of what I think it's fourteen <laughs> without my armor. And I'm gonna that have... can't possibly go wrong. Look, I have a ridiculously high charisma stat, so I'm just gonna bank on that. You're gonna bang your way out of jail, is what you're saying? No, I'm gonna make them think I'm gonna bang my way out of jail. Anyway, uh, okay. So that's... Yes. That's tomorrow. Tuesday, uh, not 100% sure what we're doing Tuesday yet. We're definitely not doing Road 96. Uh, but I probably won't be the one streaming, considering my internet is undergoing maintenance. Uh, oh, boy. Between... Depending on if Jack is available, we might just finish off the One Piece Devil Fruit tier list. Yeah, maybe That's that. Terrible. It also depends on, you know, if I can actually connect. Um... I mean, Tuesday we could do Monster Prom or something. Again, it, we'll figure something out. Basically, again, it very much depends on what my internet situation is because it might be it might be a case of I'm left with just like uh, mobile data. Uh, Ooh, yeah. How am I you doing make, on like, my a mobile hotspot? How am I doing on my mobile data? I can't. I can technically do that, but it would involve me taking uh, my SIM card out of my phone because um, my uh, PC doesn't actually connect via um, wirelessly because I didn't think that's weird. I didn't add it as an option because I thought, oh, I'll always be near an Ethernet port with this gigantic thing. Maybe well, yeah, that's so, an option. Uh, the, ch the chance. Uh, I can't be bothered. Uh, anyway, so that'll be Tuesday. Thursday, again, not entirely sure what we're going to do there. Thursday, we. Do you want to say Thursday we will actually do part two of the... Uh, we can, we the... can make that commitment, I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, thir wouldn't Thursday be best to do the do's and don'ts because Gannon might want to be on that one? We'll see. We need to ask Gannon about that. We yeah. need to ask Gannon about that. Gannon says yes, we'll do that on Thursday. If not, we'll do Devil Fruit. Yeah, and we will do Devil Fruits on Saturday if we don't do a do's and don'ts on Saturday. Yeah, we've got that set then. Either way, next week we will be doing do's and don'ts of uh, LGBTQ plus rep, uh, and we will be doing part two of the Devil Fruit stream where we of the Devil Fruit tier list where we hopefully will be finishing that off. Yep. He's made of rubber. How did that happen? It's -ho -ho. very complicated, Yo -ho -ho. actually. Yeah. Yes. It's much more complicated than we initially thought. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, again. About. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please do give us a follow here on Twitch and on Twitter at Storytime underscore net for all of the uh, most recent info on when we start streaming. And otherwise, we hope to see you on tomorrow in... What is it? 15 hours-ish? 14, 14, 14 hours 20. 14 hours 20-ish. Uh, for more D&D, good night. Bye-bye. Later.